ex-boyfriend, stab wound, virgin birth. How do they all connect? It's not a Bible story. It's this case report from the British Journal of OBGYN, which is a serious article. I thought this was a hoax, guys, when I first read it. Um, it's unbelievable. So make sure you watch till the end so we can figure out what's going on because this has been baffling five decades of doctors. And so it's really interesting. I'm gonna give you my perspective, some scientific background. Let's see uh, what clever brains we can put together to figure this out on this channel. So what happened was a woman attended an emergency department with two men, all of which had knife wounds. The woman had a knife wound on her left arm and on her upper abdomen around her stomach. So she needed to go to surgery. They cut open the abdomen with a procedure called a laparotomy and they found two holes in the stomach and they did a double layer repair on both of them. If you do a single layer repair, that means you just put one layer of stitches. So you don't really have a backup if any of the stitches come loose, but if you do a double layer, then you have that extra protection there. They tried looking for any of the stomach acid or contents of the stomach, and they couldn't find any there in the abdomen, but they washed it out, and then they sent the lady home after closing the wound. Now, about 280 days later, she comes back with tummy pain, and uh, what they find is that there's a baby in there. Now, what's interesting is that when they looked down below, she didn't have a vagina. So how on earth did this woman get pregnant with no vagina? It took a serious amount of questioning, but they ended up finding out what happened. So that she was well aware that she had no vagina and she had a condition called malarian agenesis. It's pretty rare, but it's more common than you might expect. It affects one in four and a half to 5,000 women. And she was tired of failed attempts at traditional intercourse. So uh, she performed fellatio on her new boyfriend and Mr. Ex-boyfriend decided to crash the party and found her in the act. And so, uh, as the author said, a small war came out. Dr. Dowie, you should be writing movie scripts with this. But well, what happened, she said, was that she had performed that fellatio just before she was stabbed. So the doctors in the paper thought that the leakage of the stomach contents caused the escape of spermatozoa, which allowed it to get itself into the womb and lead to the baby. Now that's a fair explanation, but there are a few serious problems with that. And to understand these, you need to know a little bit of background. So the first thing you need to know is about stomach acid and it's pretty acidic, 1.5 to 3.5. And the lower the number, the more acidic it is. Um, now the vagina is conventionally acidic as well, but it's a little bit less so. It sits around 3.8 to 5 and the sperm can survive there for longer than it could in the stomach, which there have been plenty of research studies to show. Sperm doesn't survive long there and that's the whole point. Stomach's supposed to break down things that go inside. Essentially, there's another thing that you need to know about this and that is how a female cycle works. Hopefully everyone who's watching this knows that women have periods and if you don't, you probably shouldn't be watching, so click off. Um, and if the blood has nowhere to go because a woman has no vagina and just an ex a dimple where it should be, then it will get stuck inside the uterus and the blood will fill up and it is very, very unlikely that you can have fertilization of an egg and implantation in that environment is postulated that it's less than one in a million uh, event that this could occur. I mean, this case is already one in a million, but that's taking it even further. Those are the real problems with the explanation. I think there's a better explanation for this. What I would suggest is maybe you think about what else could happen right now. You probably, while you're thinking, have a few questions. So I'm gonna try and predict, I'm gonna beam some information from you and say one of them is, how does a sperm get 
from inside an abdominal cavity into the womb? That's a really good question you asked. Well, the fallopian tubes are actually open-ended on either side, even at the ovary side. When the egg actually comes from the ovary, there are these things called fimbria, which are like little fingers, which pull the egg inside the tube and then over the other side into the womb. If the sperm actually leaked or got into the abdominal cavity somehow, then it can survive in there for a decent amount of time as long as it's not acidic and two to three days it could swim up into the end of the fallopian tube and then go in through that entrance. The authors do suggest some solutions for the problem that I mentioned. So if the woman has been starved for a long time then she doesn't produce any stomach acid. The counter to that is that your stomach does not tell the difference between food and sperm because it it's not used to having sperm in there. Uh, and so it will start producing acid when it gets inside. Uh, so that throws that explanation out the window. The other thing is that is to do with the blood in the uterus. And they basically said that, well, it could be that she got pregnant basically on her first cycle ever because if it were further on and she'd had too many periods, then her uterus wouldn't be able to bear a child, which is what she'd been told her whole life. And that could be a plausible explanation. She was 15 years old, and so that would be quite unlikely, although still considered normal at the time. The average age of having your first period is about 13 years old and she's 15 years old, although a normal range would be between about 10 to 16 years old. So you could, it wouldn't be totally out of the ordinary that that would have been a first or close to a first period. And the other reason for that is because each period produced about 60 mils of blood. They found that she actually did have a very small internal vagina that led out from the womb itself. That was about two centimeters in length. The average diameter of a vagina or the width is around 2.9 centimeters. So if you do the math, so the volume is only about 13 cubic centimeters, which equals to 13 mils. Uh, and that really could only take maybe one day of bleeding max before she starts getting backflow into the uterus. So that really indicates that it must have been one of her first cycles. I do think that it's a bit far-fetched to think that the sperm would be able to survive the stomach acid, especially because they didn't find any gastric contents inside the abdominal cavity. When I say abdominal cavity, I mean the, the empty space around your organs between your diaphragm, which is the muscle used for breathing, and down in your uh, basically pelvic floor, which is where all your uh, reproductive organs are. And, um, and so they probably would have found that, the gastric contents, if they did leak from there. So what I think is more likely is the gastric contents probably leaked outside the body. Um, and it was the sperm that were on the knife, probably from her left hand, because it would have likely she probably was trying to stop the knife and then it took the sperm from her hand onto the knife into the abdominal cavity and that's how they hitched a ride into the womb especially after they put the wash into the abdomen which probably helped bring up the sperm help it enter that end of the fallopian tube go into the womb at the time of ovulation slap bang hitch a ride straight to becoming a uh, full grown baby and if you're wondering how the story ended it it was a happy one so uh, the baby was healthy and did end up looking like the new boyfriend which the authors say excluded more immaculate means of conception. There weren't any hard feelings between the daughter, her family and the new boyfriend and some cattle changed hands to make sure that that was the case. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'd love to hear what your theories are on this. Don't know if you could come up with any um, smart ideas. 
based on what we've said. The moral of the story is always stay safe, use birth control, don't let your ex-boyfriend keep the keys. Uh, if you want to keep the mental cogs turning, then the YouTube algorithm gonna magically bring up a video just over here. So take a look at that if you're interested. I am Dr. Saramed Mezher and I will see you in the next video. Stay safe and take care. Bye-bye.